CBC News is learning that there is an investigation underway following a major data security breach. Internal emails show there was a detection of malicious cyber activity affecting the department's internal network. Let's go now to our Sarah Galashin, who's following all this news as it's coming out. Sarah, it sounds like there are a lot of employees affected by this. What are they being told? Yeah, Hannah, well, I mean, you, you read actually a portion there from one of the emails that our colleagues in Ottawa actually have managed to see internal emails that have been sent to staff telling them about what has happened here and and, and the quote there is the detection of malicious cyber activity um, and it, it does seem clear that uh, many employees could be affected by this uh, specifically at Global Affairs Canada for those who are unaware Global Affairs Canada is uh, an agency within the government that handles uh, diplomatic relations travel and consular services um, international trade development and humanitarian aid and, and sensitive material um, can certainly be uh, be handled within that agency. It's unclear just what might have been uh, affected here uh, in terms of what information might have been accessed or lost. But what we understand is that the breach affects at least two internal drives and that as well staff uh, contacts, calendars and emails uh, have been affected. And in uh, the multiple sources that our colleagues have been uh, verifying this with, uh, some of them have uh, confirmed that they have been told that they, uh, as of last Wednesday, needed to come back into the office and, and stop working remotely, at least for now. In some of these emails, uh, there have been three in all that CBC has managed to, to look at here. Um, in one case, employees are told to monitor their own financial accounts to ensure there's been no unauthorized activity, Hannah. Um, and that email also acknowledging that this may be unsettling for employees who've been affected here. When we say this has been a prolonged data breach, how long has it been an issue? It looks like it's been an issue for about a month. In one of the emails, actual dates are given, and, and the date's December 20th, 2023, through to January of this year, January 24. Um, that is the, the, the time in which uh, they said their internal systems have been vulnerable. They are letting staff know, uh, specifically if they had connected remotely during this window of time, i.e. working from home, connecting to the, the, the server uh, from a different, a different spot other than in the workplace, that they may have uh, been affected as a result. So that speaks to the needing to come back into the office as of last Wednesday. Not clear, as I say, exactly what information has been compromised, but we have uh, heard from the privacy office of the privacy commissioner about this. Uh, we have a statement here, part of the email to our Kate McKenna in our Ottawa Bureau, the privacy commissioner office writing that Global Affairs Canada informed our office of the data breach on January 26th. We're in ongoing communication uh, with the department to gather more information Information. They also say that they are working to understand just uh, how this privacy breach uh, may have affected information, who is being affected, and ensuring that those employees uh, who have been affected are being uh, properly notified. Also in the emails, uh, there is, ta there is um, a mention of the hybrid work model that some employees have been uh, using, i.e. being able to, to work from home sometimes. And uh, the indication is that long term, uh, that is not to be affected, though there is the ask for uh, at least some certainly to return to the workplace. We have reached out to Global Affairs Canada, Hannah, Hannah and are still waiting for a response from the department. Oh. Okay, Sarah Galashin, thank you for this breaking news. You bet. So for more on this developing story, we want to bring in Neil Bisson. He is the director of Global Intelligence Knowledge Network and is a former CSIS intelligence officer. And uh, Neil, I appreciate you taking the time. So you've taken an early look at, at what we know. Any idea who could be behind this? Thanks for having me, Andrew. Uh, at this point in time, I think it's difficult to say who it could be. I mean, you're looking at uh, some sort of a malicious actor who could be either a state or a non-state actor. Um, any state or non-state actors have an interest in um, gaining information from the Canadian government, uh, this would definitely be a viable target. So it, could, it, it appears the breach originated in Canada. Uh, does that um, have any relation to whether it's a state actor or a non-state actor, or could it be uh, somebody that's being directed, for instance, by a state actor? It's difficult to say at this point if it has to do with um, a breach or a compromise of a virtual private network, that could have happened uh, anywhere. Uh, so it's difficult to say if it was the breach of the VPN that led to uh, further steps and uh, more of a breach, or if it happened 
Geographically, it's very difficult to say where. How, how would you characterize the seriousness of this breach at Global Affairs and that it, it went on for, uh, it was prolonged, it was at least a month? The length of time that it went on for is not necessarily surprising. Uh, most breaches from malicious actors, they can be inside a system for upwards to over a couple of years before they're even discovered. So the fact that it was discovered within a month is actually, I would say, quite good. Um, but when it comes to the information that was potentially compromised, if you're looking at emails, uh, calendars, lists of contacts, that's uh, if you're looking at it from an intelligence perspective, that is a treasure trove of information because you're talking about um, basically everyone that that individual may be in contact with through their um, portal. Uh, you're talking about a calendar, so you're talking about events that could be happening depending on how long into the future. And uh, you're also getting an idea of what, uh, with the emails, uh, you know, plans and um, different uh, types of uh, information that would be exchanged through those emails. Could this be characterized as dangerous, having a breach like this at Global Affairs? I think it would be a little too early to tell right now uh, what level of danger we're talking here. Uh, a compromise is a compromise, and that in and of itself obviously is an issue. Um, I think as more information comes out from, from what I understand, there are some uh, forensics being done by SSC and CSE, and I think once we have a better understanding of what the digital footprint is from whoever the malicious actor was, that will give us a better idea as to what level of danger we're looking at. And what about the VPN aspect? What can you tell us about yeah. that? From my understanding and from what I've read to this point, it just seems like the VPN was what was uh, originally compromised and that might have been the access in. So the unfortunate thing is like with many other um, firewalls, virtual private networks, other things that most individuals use um, when they're working uh, outside of the office, you're under the impression that uh, that's giving you a level of protection. And that's the issue is that if you feel like that is, you've got it turned on, it's working, that's giving you a level of protection. Um, unfortunately, in this case, it seems like that was a false sense of security. So let's talk a little bit about uh, the firewalls. Uh, how robust are they? And um, you know, we've heard about how employees are being asked to return uh, to uh, the office who are in some kind of hybrid model. Is is it better to have some everybody kind of in the same building uh, where the firewalls can be better enforced? It's very difficult to say. Um, we all look at how robust the systems are and how much we put in trust in those systems. Um, bringing people into the office, uh, you may have a little bit more control over what's happening, but it doesn't necessarily mean that there wouldn't be compromises in that uh, area either. So does this suggest there's weakness um, in terms of uh, at Global Affairs Canada? I wouldn't necessarily categorize it as weakness. Any system that you have in terms of communication has its levels of vulnerability. So what this means is that if this virtual private network was hacked and there was a breach, the first thing that everyone needs to get an understanding of is who were who was involved in, in that breach. And um, I think they have to reverse engineer it from there. Once the digital forensics have been completed, it will give uh, Global Affairs Canada and hopefully the rest of the Canadian government a better understanding of what the vulnerabilities are. Mm -hmm. you're, a for, you're a former uh, CSIS intelligence officer. Are you hopeful that they'll be able to find out who's responsible? Uh, I, I'm actually more than hopeful. I, I actually think this will happen. I think um, most uh, malicious actors do leave, uh, either have a modus operandi or leave a digital footprint. So I just think it's really a matter of time before they're able to find out who is uh, who did this. Neil, thank you. That's former CSIS agent Neil Bison in Ottawa.